بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وعلى من تبع هداهم إلى يوم الدين Today's night is the 14th of Rabi Uthani, 1439. We're studying Al-Adab Al-Mufrad by the Imam Al-Bukhari. May Allah have mercy on his soul. We've reached chapter 250. The intelligence is in the heart. Hadith, four, uh, the hadith 547. Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, said at Sifin, the intelligence is located in the heart. Mercy is located in the liver. Compassion is located in the spleen. The endurance or breathing is located in the lungs. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. Imam al-Bukhari gives in his book the chapter title Al-Aqlu fil-Qalb. Intellect is in the heart. The Imam al-Bukhari bringing this chapter to show the importance of the heart being the leader. Al-Qa'id. For verily if he is to be correct then everything will be correct. If, if the qalb is to be healthy, then everything will be healthy. And also he brought this chapter to show the importance of rectifying and <coughs> fixing the heart. For verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Surah Qaf, that is in the Fidelika la dhikra, verily, there is a reminder, for whom? Liman kana lahu qalb. For the one who's got a heart. Now which heart? Well, everybody's got a heart. So is this a reminder for every heart? No. The heart that has the aql, the intellect. In fi dhalika la dhikra liman kana lahu qalbun aw alqa sam'a wa huwa shaheed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says also, afalam yasiru fil ard. These people, can't they just walk into the land, trouble in the land? Fatakuna lahum qulubun ya'qiluna biha. So there will be hearts by which they understand. So it is understanding, the intellect, the understanding. Fatakuna lahum qulubun ya'qiluna biha. أو آذان يسمعون بها فإنها لا تعمل أبصار ولكن تعمل قلوب For verily, the sights, they don't go blind It's only the hearts that go blind ولكن تعمل قلوب التي في الصدور But the hearts which are in the chest Those are the ones that go blind So this chapter, as I said, Imam al-Bukhari brought it To show the importance of the heart being the leader Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said أرى إن في الجسد مضى Verily there's a flesh inside the human being. If it's to be correct and healthy, then the whole body is healthy. And if it's to be corrupt, then the whole body will be corrupt. This flesh, it is the heart. So, I think I'm, I'm losing power here. It's almost finishing. The battery is really bad. Can you untangle it? Zakallah khairan for opening the window. Some of you are freezing, but I'm okay. <laughs> This Imam al-Bukhari bring in this chapter and underneath which he brings Ali ibn Abi Talib saying, Ali ibn Abi Talib being the cousin of the Prophet sallallahu number of times he utter wisdom, hikmah. And from the wisdom that we have discussed before is the hadith which I put it here 327 <coughs> in this book in which Ali ibn Abi Talib he said, لا تكون عجلا بذرا Do not be people who are repulsive or meaning uh, extra ex very fast in deciding in decision and show it, it, spreading everything that you hear whatever you hear you go and tell it to say to the people and from the wisdom that he's bringing to it for us today Ali ibn Abi Talib he said in Safin Safin is the battle that took place between Ali ibn Abi Talib and the ones who are with him and Mu'awiyah ibn Sufyan and the ones with him. It was not by the choice of Ali, nor it was the choice by of Mu'awiyah. It is the ones who were on both sides, they have initiated the fight, they triggered the fight. There was no fight. And then after that, there was the sulh, the covenant and the truce that took place between both of them. In Safin, 
in the battle where so many companions had died. Almost thousands, thousands of companions died in that battle of Safin. Two battles, we lost lots of companions. Al-Jamal was the first one, the battle of the camel, and the battle of Safin, Muslims fighting Muslims. What is he saying here, radiallahu anhu, he said, inna al-aqla fil qalb. So he's in a war now, Safin. He's saying, verily, the aql, the intellect, the understanding is in the heart. And then he says, وَالرَّحْمَةُ فِي الْكَبِدِ And verily, mercy is in the liver. وَالرَّأْفَةُ فِي الْطِحَالِ الرَّأْفَةُ He said, what? Something. No, no, but what is the rafa? Compassion, it said. A compassion, forbearing, even mercy. Because rafa is mercy. And even rafa is more of a mercy than the mercy itself. So rafa is more of a powerful word than rahma. Rafa. Compassionate or other than that. Al-Ra'fatu in the spleen. And the spleen and the liver are close from the heart. And which is the leader? Is the heart. So he's saying if the person has got common sense in his heart, he would have rahmah and he would have ra'fa and he would not resort to fight. And verily, the breath is in the lungs. But all of it under the control of the heart. The heart stops, rahmah and ra'fa and also the breath will stop. So basically this uh, wisdom from Ali and Abi Talib is saying it to us, is that if your heart has the right understanding and it's got common sense, then he will put the mercy in the right place. And if the heart is corrupt and has no common sense, then he will not put the rahmah in the right place and that is where the fight will still continue. Do you understand me? Fight. And the battle will stop, will stay continue to continue. Coming to the hadith five four eight under the chapter two hundred fifty one. Al Kib. No. Chapter two five one. Arrogance. Hadith five four eight. Abdullah ibn Amr said, "We were sitting with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when a Bedouin man wearing a green robe approached until he stood before the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said." Your companion has debased every horseman, or he said, he intends to debase every horseman and elevate every shepherd. The Prophet ﷺ took hold of the folds of his robe and said, I see that you are wearing the clothes of someone who is without intelligence. Then he went on, when the Prophet Nuh, peace be upon him, was close to death, he said to his son, I will give you some instructions. I command you two things and I forbid you two things. I command you to say that there is no God but Allah. If the seven heavens and the seven earths were to be placed in one scale and the kalima la ilaha illallah, that is there is no God but Allah, was placed in the other, it would outweigh them. If the seven heavens and the seven earths were a dark ring, they would be cut by la ilaha illallah. That is, there is no God but Allah. And subhanallah wa bihamdi, that is, glory be to Allah and by His praise. It is, the prayer, it is the prayer of everything, and by it, everything has its provision. I forbid you to associate things with Allah, and I forbid pride. I said, or it was asked, Messenger of Allah, we know about shirk, that is, to associate something with Allah. But what is pride? Is it that one of us has a robe, that is a nice cloth, which he wears? The Prophet replied, no. It was asked, is it that one of us has a pair of good sandals with two straps? He replied, no. He was asked, is it that one of us has a particular animal that he rides? He replied, no. He was asked, is it that one of us has companions who come and sit with him? He said, no. He was asked, Messenger of Allah, what is pride then? He replied, it is to ignore the truth and to hold people in contempt. And this chapter, the Imam al-Bukhari brings it because it's a result of that the heart has no common sense. It will result into arrogance, al-kibr, pride. Because of that, Imam al-Bukhari brings that chapter underneath that chapter, following that chapter in which he brings a, a mighty story that took place which will 
take the whole lecture, maybe even another lecture. So we'll try to, inshallah, to, to uh, elaborate on this hadith. I've written about eight pages for this, so I could really write more than that. But let's just uh, see what we can do. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As, great companion, his father is a companion. He was known to be a person who was to be dedicated worshipper. He used to uh, fast every three days. Uh, sorry, fast the day break the following days. He used to recite the whole Quran every three days and he used to make Qiyam most of the days. So he was a person dedicated to his worship. He said that we were sitting with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A man from the Badia. Badia is the outside areas, the uh, urban areas, the ones which are not the city areas. And those people when they come from those areas, they usually are having no common sense. And the tough and rough, if you remember we talked about that when the Prophet was kissing his children in front of one of them, his name is Al-Aqra ibn Habis, he, so, he said, well I've got 10 children, I never kissed any one of them. That's how tough they are. I've got 10 children, I never kissed one of them. So he's like seeing the Prophet of Allah doing something, this is abnormal for him. And kissing the children is for them is a sign of weakness, you should not kiss the children. So those are the people who are common, the, the people who got no common sense. Basically, uh, Anas radiallahu an used to say that we used to wait for the Bedouin man who's got common sense to ask the Prophet because most of them have got no common sense. So he used to wait for these Bedouin man to come and ask, or come and ask the Prophet because they, they used to be uh, uh, in sheer reverence to the Prophet and being scared to ask the Prophet of Allah. So who would dare to ask the Messenger of Allah? Those two people, the baddie. So one of the days, for example, the Prophet of Allah, he was delivering his khutbah. And this man from nowhere came and stopped the Prophet ﷺ delivering the khutbah. He says, when is the day of resurrection? Imagine, somebody says to the khatib, when is the day of resurrection? So the Prophet ﷺ ignored him once and then the man kept repeating it. Twice, third time. The Prophet of Allah said, well, then what did you prepare for it? He said, Messenger of Allah, the love of Allah and his messenger. He said, you are with the one whom you have loved. And that's when Anas was so happy. <coughs> it's like, so happy since he embraced Islam from that day. That you are with the one whom you've loved. You know, you are with the one whom you love. So even though you're not going to be as good as Abu Bakr in terms of deed-wise, definitely not going to be as good as him. But if you love him properly, you're going to be what? You're going to be with him. So this Bedouin man has got no common sense. As I said, the other Bedouin man got common sense, but this one has got no common sense. Now, he had Jubbah Sijan, cloak made of silk. Is that what she said at the beginning? It's um, a green robe. It doesn't say anything else. There's no green here. So it's not... Sijan means silk. Made of silk. Uh, actually, you could as well. There's one of the meanings is that it is um, the cloak, which is the unscreen could say that as well. It's one of the meaning, but it's made of silk. Number two, this person, he stood on top of the Prophet he had been a messenger while sitting, and he's standing up next to his head. Said to the companions, and that's a sign of actually, uh, uh, you know, disrespecting the person. So if you stand to the person, and then you talk to other people, ignoring that person, you are disrespecting that person. So the first respectful sign was that the Prophet ﷺ, that he's ignoring the Messenger while talking to the companion. And then more disrespectful to him, he says, Inna sahibakuma, this man of yours. Look at that. Now the Prophet of Allah, this man of yours, Inna sahiba. So when you don't mention somebody's name, that's a sign of disrespect as well. Qad wadu'a kulla faris. He had debased every horseman, that's what he said. But it doesn't mean he's horseman here. He means every courageous, noble person, he humiliated him. The Pharisee, yes, translation literally means horseman, but it doesn't mean he a horseman. He debased every horseman, he was not going to be understood. But actually every courageous, because Pharisee means courageous, noble. Every courageous, noble person, he humiliated him. And he translated that he elevated every shepherd. Shepherd, he is not meant literally shepherd. Now every person who is a uh, coward. So the shepherd here means what? Coward. Yes, literally means shepherd, but it means he a coward. So basically, this man of yours 
is trying to put down and humiliate the courageous hero people and lift up and elevate the ones who are what? Coward. And that is the, you could say, one of the greatest zulm attributed to the Prophet ﷺ. This is not from the manners of the Messenger of Allah. And this is not from his justice and his rule. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ got so angry. And he is being so angry here, it's not because of himself. No. It's because he's accusing the what? The prophethood. So when he says, this man of yours, he's not talking as an individual, he's talking about an ambassador of religion. So this Prophet ﷺ is doing that, elevating the coward and putting down the noble, courageous, and the hero, uh, and the brave. That's, that's not injustice. So you're accusing religion to be injustice. That's what it is. And that's why the Prophet of Allah got angry. Otherwise the Prophet of Allah doesn't get angry if it's to do with himself. He's been humiliated more than that. Never got revenge for himself. So for example, one day, Anas radiallahu anhu said that the Bidwin man came. One of them has got common, no common sense again. He held him from his collar like that and he pulled him till he left a mark on his neck. Give me from what Allah has given you. I mean the zakat. Prophet Allah, he left, looked at Anas and smiled. He gave him. So, if he wanted to get revenge for himself, I mean, he could have just punched that guy. He said, just give him. Uh, and, and, and there's a story as well, which is uh, authentic. It's in Sisir Sayyid Sheikh al-Albani. That the Prophet wasallam he bought from a Bedouin man a game. You could find out now whether he's got common sense or not. He bought from him uh, some camels. And he bought them for a whisk of Tamr al-Ajwa. You know the dates of Ajwa? And the whisk is 60 uh, sa'a. 60 sa'a, and each sa'a is about 3 kilos, so it's about 180 kilos of date of Ajwa, and Ajwa is expensive. So for that, he purchased what? A camel. So the Prophet ﷺ brought the camel, and then he wanted to get the Ajwa, the dates, and he found out that he's got nothing. He has nothing to offer the Bidwin man. So the Bidwin man came and he said, the Messenger said to him, for verily, we bought the camel from you thinking that we've got the dates, but we haven't. So the man started shouting with his loudest voice, Wa Ghudra, what a traitor you are! People around him, they were about to beat him up. He said, Talking about to the Prophet ﷺ. A messenger of Allah is going to betray you, is going to trick you. Is a traitor calling him? So the Prophet ﷺ said, leave him. For verily, every person who's got right with him, he has to say his saying. Look at that. So if you've got right with you, you've got some sort of right with you, you have the, you're a saying. So let him say whatever he says. So let him say, accuse me of being a traitor. Because he's got right. He wanted the money, and the Prophet did not give him the money. So then the Prophet of Allah repeated again. He said to him, For verily, I wanted to give you, but I came, I got nothing. Again, the man screamed, Wa Hudra, what a traitor you are! Prophet of Allah repeated again for the third time. I wanted to give you, man, but I don't have any. I will give you later on. And the man said, Why, what about you, what a traitor you are? Look how impatient is the Prophet. He doesn't want to get revenge for himself. Then he said, after he saw that this man is not understanding him, he doesn't want to understand, he's thick in his mind, he sent for someone to go from his, from his companion, from the companion of that man, go and ask Khawla bint Hakim, the wife of Uthman bin Mad'un. Go and ask her if she's got some dates with her. So, and if she got, bring even not just the same, but bring even more for the man. They went to Khawla bin Hakim, she said, I've got it, Messenger of Allah. So he told the man, go and give him what he deserves and make it proper. So he gave, he gave it to the man, and the man passed by the Prophet of Allah while with his companions. So he told the Prophet of Allah, and the big one is smiling. Jazakallah khairan. For verily, you have given me back the money, and you've done very well. It means giving me better, even. He's talking to the Prophet ﷺ. Prophet of Allah, he said, the best of the people, the best of the righteous people in the sight of Allah, in the day of resurrection, the ones who pay back and extra. It means 
The, the, for example, you pay back what, what, you, what, what you have promised, and you give extra as well. al mutayyid that means you made that person <coughs> whom you have taken the purchase from him, or the loan from him, to be happy. So he made that man after he was mad. How dare you not giving me the money now? Giving me the date now. Why would you're a traitor? The Prophet gave him, gave him extra to calm him down. He, that's why he was so happy with that. So to show you this is a story, the Prophet of Allah doesn't take revenge for himself, but he takes revenge for the sake of the deen. So that is why he got angry from the man, because you're accusing Prophet Uri. I'm not just. And it reminds me of another story when the Prophet of Allah was accused by this man, Harqus, the head of the Takfiri, the head of the Khawarij. When the Prophet of Allah was dividing the gold, which was sent by Ali Nabi Talib, to some of the people from the Quraysh, this man came, shaved head, big hair, big hair, big uh, beard, he's got black spots showing this sujood onto his forehead, coming from there, and he said, Adil, Ya Muhammad, be just, O Muhammad. Subhanallah, Prophet Sallallahu got annoyed. He said, why hack? Who to you? If I'm not, why lack? If I'm not just, who's going to be just? If the Prophet, of, and he said to him, I could see that you've got the clothes of the person who's got no common sense. Why? He said that. Because the man has got this cloak, which is made of what? Silk. And the silk is what? Haram on the man. Number two, he's actually got this dress which is looking like the dress of the non-Muslims. It's another as well sign. That he's got no common sense. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, if you emulate other people, you're like them. And Abdullah ibn Masood, he said, verily, definitely, that the clothes will not resemble the other clothes, except if the hearts are the same. You don't resemble the clothes of other people unless your heart has similar things to the heart of those people. So that's why it is dangerous. So the Prophet Wasallam, after he said that to him, then he ignored him. Just like he disrespect him, disrespected him at the beginning, while he's not talking to the Prophet, he said, you, your man, this is this man of yours. So like he ignored him, and he addressed now the companions, saying to them, Verily, the Prophet of Allah, Nuh alayhi salam, and it's a good thing here to bring stories. And he brought the story of the Prophets, and the first messenger on earth was Nuh alayhi salam. The first prophet was An. But the first messenger was Nuh. What's the difference between prophet and messenger? The messenger is the one who is being given the task to deliver his message to the disbelievers and the believers. Whereas the prophet is only for the what? The believers. So he said, Nuh alayhi salam, when he's about to die, he gave him the will. He counseled him, he said to his son, Inni qasun alayka al-wasiyya. I'm going to give you my will. And this is the will of a father to his children. And the will is of two types. Either it's the will which is materialistic, money, wealth. Or it's a will which is a spiritual one. The wealth will, which is that you make sure that you give those people who are deserve to be given, except for the inheritors. Or you want to as well make a will of a third. We have discussed some of those hadith, like for example, hadith of Jabir ibn Abdullah, when the Prophet ﷺ came to him and Abu Bakr, along with Abu Bakr, to visit him when he was ill, and he was con- unconscious. Prophet Allah made wudu, and he put the wudu on top of him. And then after he woke up, he said, Messenger of Allah, what should I do with my money? And the Prophet of Allah did not answer until the ayah regarding the inheritance of Surah Nisa was revealed. And also we've discussed the story of Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, عنه, when he got ill and he was crying, if you remember. And he was crying because he was in Mecca and he wanted to, be, to die where? In Medina. And he said to the Prophet of Allah, I've got a lot of money and I've got one daughter. Shall I give my, all my wealth away? So he said, no. He said, what about half? He said, no. What about a third? He said, yes, third. But the third is what? Too much. But if you leave your people or your heirs who you're in charge of to be better off than to make them what? Asking the people. It's better to make them what? Better off. So 
the wasiya is when there is huquq uh, uh, rights and obligations it is a must so for example in the wasiya you will say that i want to give such and such money to that person because he's a, he had given me a loan and the loans are very important so there is huquq rights of the people so you have to document that i have borrowed from such and such person and also people borrowing from you is very important to document that because you got heirs you got inheritors to to go and collect the money on your behalf because they will need that money so you have to document that and don't mess about with the with the what with the loans don't mess about with those for verily i find that so many muslims these days they get into debt very easily they purchase the house and the car they purchase the freezer and the fridge purchase the tv and all of it in installments partly partially paid and the rest is not paid and they the guarantee what well, they got a have you got a written for example agreement by with Allah from subhanahu wa ta'ala you're going to live that long to go and pay that debt of yours i don't know so you're going to die you're going to leave all of that unpaid what are you going to do with that so take the matter of the loan seriously so lots of people they just don't care about that they keep borrowing and borrowing even the wife they marry it and the dowry is not being paid. So he's debt even to his wife. So he's going to pay the money behind you. Prophet of Allah was asked by a man, he said, Messenger of Allah, if I die as a shaheed, Omar says, will you forgive him? He said, yes. Man left. He said, come back. Jibiya Salam, you stole me now, except for the debt. So, if you're a martyr, shaheed, everything would be forgiven, but the debt cannot be forgiven. If you have died, and you have a debt, and you were intended to, to, to pay it back, but somehow you couldn't, and the people of your relatives couldn't pay it as well after your death, don't worry about it. Allah will pay on your behalf. But if you're a person, you're messing about, and you not want to pay the debt, and you got the money to do, them, to do so. On the day of resurrection, the currency is not pounds and dinar. The currency is hasanat and sayyid. So you're either going to pay from your hasanat, if you haven't got any, the sayyat of the other person will be dropped on top of you, and you'll be dropped into the hellfire. So, as I said, and I'm reminding myself and yourself, the very healthy, happy person is the one, even with little money, but he's got no debt. Debt free. So when I say to somebody, how are you brother? Alhamdulillah, I've got no debt on me. He's happy. That is a happy man. You could be a lot of money, but you are in debt, you are unhappy, you can't sleep. Some of the people are so in debt, they can't go to the masjid because they're in case the creditor is going to be there. And the creditor will turn into a predator. True or not? Yeah. Because you're going to jail him, you're going to put him in prison, you're going to ask him, Where is my money? He might beat him up. So he might show himself nowhere, he's going to stay in the house. Why? <laughs> because he's in debt. And that's why the scholars, when they talk about a person who's been excused from coming to the Jummah, they say, one who is in debt. <laughs> because the, you know, the debt collectors are after him. <laughs> they want to find where he is. Ah, he prays the Jummah, let's wait for him. Tayyib. <laughs> the second, on this well, Prophet of Allah said about that, Hadith Abdullah ibn Umar, Ma. حق امرئ مسلم يبيت ليلتين وعنده شيء يريد ان يوصي فيه الا ووصيته مكتوبه عند راس بروفيسور ابي زيد it is not right for any muslim person that he's got something to bequeath something to write a will into it or to his rights and obligations that he should not sleep two nights except his will is already written underneath his head abdullah ibn umar as upon hearing this hadith said wallahi one night did not pass since i heard the prophet of allah saying that Except that my will was ready next to my head. So if you got something as well, you should not sleep tonight until you write your will, put it in your computer, your laptop, give it. And you could make this will written, or you could make it as well but by vocal. And look here, the will of Nuh Ali said to his son, what was that, written? No. He was saying, my dear son, I am going to tell you my will. So it is word to word. Verbal. It was not written. So if you have a verbal will, no problem as long as you have witnesses on it. No problem. Tell your wife about how much debts and how much loans and giving and all of that. Second type of will is the spiritual one. Spiritual one is the one that you write 
I advise you, my children, or my wife, or my people, to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to observe the religion, observe your salah, recite the Quran, and to keep away from the bid'ah, keep away from the sins, um, to make sure that my janazah is in the sunnah way, not on the bid'ah, especially if you know that your people are going to be wailing, or they're going to be shaving their head, or they're going to be pulling their hair, or they're going to be tearing off their clothes. You have to tell them, got nothing to do with it. I'm dissociating myself from anything that the Prophet of Allah dissociates himself from. So the great companions, they said, I, I dissociate myself from everything that the Prophet of Allah dissociated himself from. One of that, one of this, is that the wailing. What is the wailing? Screaming. There's always women screaming. They scream. They call them the screamers. They pay the money even to come to the funeral to just scream, you know, shout. They're all hypocrites. Prophet of Allah said, The one who is wailed from the women, she will be standing before Allah on to her a garment made of tar. You know tar? The tar they make the asphalt from. That will melt her bones on top of her. And also a garment made of scabies. Disease, that, you, know, you know, for the skin. Very horrible. So if you see that in the day of resurrection, you know that this woman, she was, well, it's usually the women, not the men, do the wailing. Uh, Prophet Ibrahim, he gave a will to his sons, to his children. Allah says, Speaking what Ibrahim had said to his son, Ibrahim, And who is going to be going away from the religion of Ibrahim except for the one who had wronged himself? He fooled himself. And we have chosen him in this dunya. And in the akhirah, he's among the righteous. Behold, when his Lord said to him, Mary's Islam. He said, "Qala aslam tu li Rabbi alamin." I said, "I have submitted to the Lord of the Alamin." Wassa biha Ibrahim ubani. And Ibrahim, he had counsel with this that is to submit to your Lord. He had counseled his sons with it, and also wa yaqub. He had also counseled his son. Ya bani, O sons, inna Allah astafa alakum udin. For verily Allah had chosen for you the deen, the Islam. Fala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Thy not accept an instead of Islam. Am kuntum shuhada. Were you there present? It hadara Yaqub al maut. And when the death came to Yaqub, it qala li banihi ma ta'buduna min ba'di. When he said to his sons and his children, What are you going to worship after me? Qalu na'budu ilahaka wa ilaha abaika Ibrahim wa Ismail wa Ishaqa ilaha wa ahida. Wa nahnu lahu muslimun. We worship, he said, your God and the God of your fathers, Ibrahim and Ismail and Ishaq, one God. And we are to him submitting. Muslimun. Nuh alayhi salam, he said, to his son, I'm going to counsel you with two things and prohibiting you from two things. This is my counseling. I'm going to command you with two things and prohibiting you from two things. Let's just discuss that one. He said, I command you. First one, La ilaha illallah. And the second one, Subhanallah wa bihamdi. These are two commands. Prohibit you from two things. Number one, shirk. And number two, kibr, pride, arrogance. La ilaha illallah. I command you with la ilaha illallah. This is tawheed, monotheism. Tawheed. This is the wasiyah of all the prophets. We have sent a messenger in every nation. What? La ilaha illallah. Telling them la ilaha illallah. That is to shun worshipping the taghut. And taghutiyah is la ilaha. Ashadu an la ilaha. I testify there is no God worthy. This is to disbelief in all tawagheed. Illa Allah except for Allah. That's tawheed and monotheism. So this is the, the will which Allah commanded the Prophet Nuh and all other prophets with it. Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, he called for la ilaha illallah how many years? 950 years. According to la ilaha illallah. And how many people had followed him from that? Very few. Some of his children, one of his children did not. The amount of, I would say, not people, amount of creation that followed him is so few. 
from every species a pair in an ark ship which was made by primitive hands primitive materials it's not like the ship of the queen okay was technology no it's just a simple ship it had the whole believers and Allah says وَمَا آمَنَ مَعَهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ and only few people have believed him 950 years few people to tell you there are few people Prophet ﷺ he saw a vision in which he saw prophets and all the nations behind the prophets each prophet will be leader of the nation that he was sent to so he will be the leader he saw a prophet he's got men or two men imagine he's been calling Allah for Allah and he's got what? one or two people another prophet he's got Ar-Rahd ar up to ten less than ten and a prophet has got what? Nobody with him. Prophet is being called to Allah. He is being supported and, uh, and given the miracles. Yet none had followed. Nuh alayhi salam, 950 years. Few people. Very few. They used to take the mic out of him. They see him building a ship in the middle of the desert. He said, what are you talking? Building a ship in the middle of the desert? He said, well... You are taking the mick out of us, we're going to take the mick out of you. Askharu. Mikul kaman. Askharu. So we will take, we will see. And then when the flood came, they knew. Now that Dr. Prum was telling the truth. He was saying the haqq. Uh, the ones which are the second in terms of numbers to the numbers of the followers of Muhammad, the largest numbers of the largest of, who are the followers of Muhammad. The one after that is one. The followers of Musa alayhi Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, I saw a throng of people, big large numbers. I thought it was mine. So no, this is Musa alayhi salam. But look at the other horizon and the other horizon. Two horizons being showed up. Those are your followers. So we are twice at least the followers of what? Musa alayhi salam. We are two thirds of the Jannah. Allahu Akbar. Two thirds of the Jannah. So, Prophet said, These are the ones who are your followers. Amongst them, 70,000 who will enter paradise without reckoning, without what? Punishment. So, the Ummah Muhammad has two things here quality and quantity. Quantity were the biggest. And quality, we got with us, only us, 70,000 who will go to paradise. Shortcut. Shortcut. No reckoning, no punishment. Straight away, Jannah. Palace, green light. Quality and quantity. You should be really happy you are from the Ummah Muhammad Your Prophet of Allah is the first to cross the bridge. The first to enter paradise. And he's got the biggest pool. Biggest hout. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nuh alayhi salam. Allah says about him, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فَلَبِثَ فِيهِمْ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ إِلَىٰ خَمْسِينَ عَامًا فَأَخَذَهُمْ طُولُفًا وَهُمْ ظَالِمٌ We have sent Nuh alayhi salam to his people and he stayed with them 1,000 less 50 years. It's 950 years. And then the Dalij, the flood, had overtaken them. You see, the Tawheed is the Fitrah. Fitrah means the nature that Allah created you upon. They have lived on this Fitrah for 1,000 years since Adam was created. 1,000 years upon Tawheed, then the Shayateen drifted them from the Tawheed and they started making shirk. So Allah sent them Nuh alayhi salam. He had called them to the Tawheed. Only few people responded. When Nuh alayhi salam got fed up and he was in despair from his people responding to his da'wah, he called upon them. Allah said in Surah Tawheed, رَبِّ لَا تَذَرْ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ دَيَّارَةِ Oh Lord, don't leave any single kafir on the earth. إِنَّكَ إِنْ تَذَرْهُمْ يُضِلُّ عِبَادَكَ If you leave them, they will misguide your slaves. وَلَا يَلِدُ إِلَّا فَاجِرًا كَفَّارًا And they will give birth only to a very wicked kafir person. And you know Nuh alayhi salam, after saying this dua, on the day of resurrection, he regrets it. Because when the people come to him, when the earth is shaking and all of that, earth is shaking, they come to Adam السلام, and Adam, he says, I'm not fit for it. Go to Nuh. They go to Nuh and Nuh now, when they ask him, oh Nuh, can't you see what we are in? The sun is about one mile away from us and the earth is shaking. Ask your Lord to stop this and start the reckoning. 
For verily, Allah sent you to be the first messenger, the awwal rasul. And yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved you from the deluge. You are the ones who followed you. So he said, for verily, Allah had got angry today, an anger which hasn't been done, hasn't been seen before, when it will not be seen afterwards. And for verily, I had a supplication given to me. I made it against my people. This is the supplication. لا تذر على الأرض من الكافرين ديار. Kill them all. When the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, what did he say? When those people pelted him in the ta'if, this is the very hardest day in the Prophet of Allah. Him and Zayd al-Muharitha. They went to the ta'if, calling the people to Islam. And these people, they sent the ruthless. A'udhu billah. Very hard, very harsh people, very bad people to go and pelt the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, cut him and wound him. To the extent that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala doesn't want His Prophet to be humiliated like this, He sent His angel, which is in charge of the mountains, Malikul Jibal. He came to him, O Muhammad, I am the king, I am the angel of the mountains, I am in charge of the mountains. That the mountains are under my command. And Allah had heard what you have said to your people and what they have responded. So he sent me to command me with whatever you like. If you wish, I'm giving you an example. He's giving an example of the Prophet. If you wish, I'll crush them between the two Akhshabains, which are two mountains in Mecca. I'll just crush them. I'll kill all of them if you want. So to show that how much power he's got. He's giving you an example. I could do that for you if you want. I imagine that you are the ones who had been tortured in this way. What would you command the angel of the mountains? Oh, don't kill them, kill them slowly. I want <laughs> to see them suffering and shouting like they made me suffer. Ah, that makes me happy. Throw not, and I, you know, ah, slowly, slowly kill them. <laughs> yeah, that's what you're going to be. I don't want to see the death like this. That's easy. No, 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 no slowly. The Prophet of Allah, he said, not like Nuh alayhi salam, kill all of them. He said, no, leave them. Rabali, he make a dua, I wish and I hope that Allah would bring out of their offsprings people would worship Allah alone. Allah fulfilled his supplication and the answers of the children, the offspring of those people, they were mighty Muslims. SubhanAllah. So the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, when he has given up on his people, all people kill him. That's it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had drowned them and he had Saved the ark. فَأَنْجَيْنَاهُ وَأَصْحَابَ السَّفِينَةِ وَجَعَلْنَاهَا آيَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ So we have, uh, 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 we have drowned the people and we saved the ship and the ones who were on top of it and we made it as a sign, a lesson, a warning for the people to come after that. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent messengers after the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam and every messenger following the other messenger, all of them calling to what? To La ilaha illallah the Tawheed, which Nuh alayhi salam is telling his son about. La ilaha illallah, no God worthy of worship except for Allah alone. Then he says to him, فَإِنَّ السَّمَوَاتِ السَّبْعُ وَالْأَرْضِ لَسَّبْعُ For verily, the seven heavens and the seven earth. لَوُضِعْنَ فِي كِفَّةً If they were to put one in one pan of the scale, وَوُضِعْتْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ فِي كِفَّةً and La ilaha illallah is to be put in the other pan of the scale. La rajahat bihim that the La ilaha illallah will outweigh the seven heavens and the seven earths. So it means basically that the virtues and the excellence of La ilaha illallah tawheed is heavier than everything. It's heavier than the seven heavens and the seven earths. So if one person has sins, as much and as heavy as the seven heavens and the seven earths, and he met Allah monotheistically, then his deeds of Tawheed will be heavier than his sins. Do you understand that? Because of La ilaha illallah. The Bitaqa hadith can confirm what I have said. What is the Bitaqa hadith? That the Prophet Sallallahu he said, a man will be brought on the day of resurrection. In front of him will be given 99 scrolls. Scrolls that means the, the deeds were written. 99 scrolls. Each scroll has 
as, as far as he can see. All and filled up with what? Evil deeds. So the, Allah is talking to that man, saying to him, do you deny any of that? So this man has got now this, you could say bionic, whatever you want to call it, eyes, mashallah, electronic, shh, it scans all of them. Because Allah is going to give you different sight. In one second, no, I don't deny any of that. I've done all of those bad deeds. All of them. I don't know. He says to him, did my angels wrong you? Were they against you? you know, the bias against you? you know, the angel write the deeds, maybe the one on the left wrote more bad deeds for you, for example. He looks, no, 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 they did not. I've done that, all of them. Do you have a hasan? And it's a Muslim person. Do you have a good deed that you've done? You can't think of a good deed. No, no <coughs> deed. I have no good deed. He said, no, you have a hasan. This is the day you're going to be wrong. I don't have a hasan. Oh Lord, are you scorning at me? You scorning at me? I mean, I don't have a hasan. No, no, you have a hasan. So, and you could see, like the angel holding a card for him. My little card. Now that card, in terms of weight-wise, <laughs> it's a small card with 99 scrolls. So if you're going to wear a card, simple card, with 99 books and volumes, I mean, what's going to do with it? It's a card. And he says, La ilaha illallah. So he says to him, oh Lord, what is going to La ilaha illallah do with this, all of these sins? He said, there is no oppression upon you. Go, ihdur wazna, ihdur wazna. Go and see your weight. So the La ilaha illallah will turn into physical weight. And the sins in those 99 records will turn into a physical weight. And each of them will be put into a pan of a scale. Which one is heavier? La ilaha illallah. He goes to Jannah. La ilaha illallah. La yathqulu ma'asrillahi shayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said, nothing will be heavier than the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of resurrection. In this, we find out, number one, that there's a scale. So you have to believe there's a scale. Mizan. And this Mizan has got what? Two pans. And the Mizan that we believe in is a Mizan that is one Mizan. Huge one. And it's very precise. The angel, when they brought it down, they said, Glory to you, O Lord. Who is this Mizan for? He said, whosoever will from my creation. He said, ma abadnaka haqqa ibadi. We did not worship you, O Lord, the right worship. When they see that scale, they know why now that when they objected at the beginning, if you remember when Allah created Adam alayhi salam, and they said, oh Lord, how can you create something that's going to shed blood and spread corruption? He said, I know what you don't know. Now when they see the scale, they said, oh, we did not worship with the right worship. You know that the angels were made to obey what? To obey. But we have got the what? The will to obey or to disobey. Which one is better? To obey. No, we are better. We have the will to decide. And that's why we are on upper level than the angels. That's why Allah commanded the angel to prostrate to whom? Adam. Not the Adam to prostrate to angel. And that's why we're at a better level. Because we're at a better level, Allah commanded the angels to prostrate to Adam. Along with him as well, Iblis was among the angels. He's not an angel, but he was among the angels. He was a righteous person. He was in general. Prostrate. That's what he said. No, I can't prostrate. I'm made from fire. And he's made from mud. SubhanAllah, what a stupid person he is. I mean, so what? Well, the angels are made of light. According to you, the light is all. Well, should they prostrate as well? Well, if you're calling to you, the light is better than you. In the fire. That's number one. Number two, I mean, who told you that the fire is better than the clay? Fire is the source of what? Destruction. Clay is the source of what? Growth. Which one is better? Growth or destruction? So according to your analogy, you fail as well. And who created you? Allah. So if Allah commands you, you're going to argue with Allah? I'm not going to prostrate. I'm better than him. And that is why he's being expelled from the paradise forever. And he did not repent. He said, okay, okay, I'll build the hellfire, I'll accept the hellfire. But give me what? Time. He's got no position to bargain with Allah Azza wa Jal. He's already disobeyed Allah Azza wa Jal. But Allah the Almighty is the most patient. Nobody's patient than Allah. He is the most patient. He said, okay, take time. 
until the day of Rosh Hashanah. What he asked, you're going to give him. But there's no way for you to repent now. That's it. There's no belief why he says he repent. Because Khalas has been given the chance. You're going to live all the way as a kafir. But on top of that, and on top of being cast into the hellfire, he says to Allah, okay, I'm going to mislead all your servants. Look at that. And Allah is giving you the part to say that. I'm going to mislead all your... I'm going to come to them from the front, from the back, from the right, from the left, the top, from the bottom, from everywhere. Is it a khuruj minha madhuma madhura? Get out of it. Madhuma madhura. Disgraced. Humiliated. Laman tabi'aka minhum la amla anna jahannama minkum ajma'in. Anyone follows you, I'm going to fill up the whole high fell fire from you and the lots of you, and the ones who have followed you. So, from the virtues of the Tawheed, also in this hadith it says, and if the seven heavens and the seven earth, and by the way, we believe in the scale, the two pans, and we believe in one scale, it is one scale, and we believe in that in that scale, three things will be weighed. The deeds, the scrolls, and the human being himself. Okay? You'll be weighed. Don't worry about Oh, let me put weight on, brother. <laughs> no, no. You'll be weighed with your deeds inside you. So you'll be heavy with your deeds, regardless of how much thin you are or how much fat you are. Do you understand that? So don't worry about thin people. Oh, I'm going to get fat now. <laughs> so that is why when the Prophet Wasallam, he was along with the companions, one of them is Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. And he had what? Very thin legs. They were collecting the Arak, which is the Siwak. The breeze came and lifted up the garment of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Thin legs shown to the companions. They were laughing their head off. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Messenger with very thin legs. I mean, funny legs. So really they are heavier in the Mizan and the mountain of Uhud. Those thin legs filled up with what? With deen, taqwa, tawheed. Made them up, made them heavier than the what? The mountain of Uhud. Do you understand that? So the person will be weighed in terms of his deen, the deeds will be weighed, and also the scrolls will be weighed. We believe it's one Mizan, and one, it's not every person got a Mizan, it's one Mizan. Then he says, and if the seven heavens and the seven earths is to be, you said a, a dark ring, yeah. it's not dark, closed ring, Bubhama means closed, closed ring, then la ilaha illallah will break them and penetrate. So imagine the seven earths, seven heavens are blocking the exit to go to Allah upwards. This la ilaha will what? Penetrate. La qasamatun la ilaha illallah. Or la qasamatun. Qasama or fasama is only the dot. Some of the scholars say fasamatun, not qasamatun, la ilaha illallah. La qasamatun la ilaha illallah. We understand from this as well how many earths we got? Seven. We believe that there are seven earths just like we have seven heavens. And we don't go as far as those people who say, well, we don't know the seven heavens, seven earth, they don't exist. Subhanallah. We have got nothing, no knowledge about the seven heavens, do we? Do we have a knowledge about seven heavens? Same thing about the seven earth. But some people could really understand there is seven heavens because there's galaxies and after galaxy. But the earth is only one earth. There was seven earth. We don't know about that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Surah Al-Talaq, that is, خَلَقَ سَبْعَ سَمَوَاتِ وَمِنَ الْأَرْضِ مِثْلَهُنْ He had created seven heavens. And from the earth, likewise. How many earths? Seven earths. Seven earths, we don't know how. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Fatr. إِلَيْهِ يَصْعَدُ الْكَلِيمُ الطَّيِّبُ To him, the good words elevates. وَالْعَمَلُ الصَّالِحُ يَرْفَعُ And the righteous deeds, he elevates us as well. The ahadith and this hadith indicates the excellence of this dhikr called what? La ilaha illallah. Actually, it is the best dhikr. Can you just close that window? I think, I think some people are frozen already. As you could tell. Jazakallah. <laughs> so the best of the dhikr is what? La ilaha illallah. Allah's message, he said bluntly, afdal of dhikr. The best of the dhikr is la ilaha illallah. Prophet Allah also, he said, Khairul dua, the best of the supplication on the day of Arafah 
is what I've said me and the prophets before me. لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير. That's the dua in the night, in the day of Arafah. And that is why the Prophet of Allah prompted us to say this, لا إله إلا الله. He said, من دخل السوء. He who enters the market. And how many times you have entered the market? Without saying that dua, يا أخي. Listen. So you could gain a lot of rewards. He who enters the market. And he says, لا إله إلا الله. By this hadith authenticated by Shaykh Al-Albani, regardless of what you have heard from Shaykh Ibn Baz, it is fabricated. No, it's authentic. He who says, لا إله إلا الله. وحده لا شريك له. له الملك وله الحمد. يحيي ويميت وهو حي لا يموت ها يحيي ويميت وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير كتب له ألف ألف حسنة it will be written for him ألف 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 means one million one thousand one thousand means what one million there's one no one million at that time the word million one thousand one thousand that means six zeros one million حسنة and will be removed from him one million sayyah. And he will be elevated one million rank in paradise. Allahu Akbar. So when you enter the market, say, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. Lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd. Yuhyi wa yimit. Yuhyi wa yimit. Wa wa hayu la yamut. Biyadi al-khayr wa wa ala kulli shayin qadir. Only once. And if you say the following ten times after Maghrib and after Fajr prayer, لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير or لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير ten times after Maghrib prayer and after Fajr prayer before you take your foot away from the tashahhud position you stay in the same tashahhud position after salutation you say stay pot don't move and before you utter a word if you say it ten times you're going to get this this immaculate nine eight rewards you're going to get Hundred hasana, removed hundred sayyah, elevated hundred ranks in paradise. You're going to be equivalent in, in terms of deed wise, like setting free ten slaves. Number five, you're going to be the best in the deeds, uh, 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 the best people in the deeds, except for somebody said the same and did extra. You're going to be saved from any harm, you're going to be saved from the plot of the shaitan. And also, no sins will be recorded upon you except for shirk. How many rewards? Eight. Do you want to repeat them again? Number one, hundred hasan. Number two, hundred sins will be removed. Number three, hundred steps will be elevated. Number four, the best, they will be equivalent to set free ten slaves from the son of Ismail. Number five, it's going to be the best of the people, except for a person said the same and did extra deeds. Number six, you're going to be saved from every harm. Number seven, you're going to be saved from the plot of the shaitan. Number eight, you're going to have no sins recorded against you except for what? Shirk. Eight immaculate rewards. La ilaha illallah. Always. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Tay, second command of the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. He said to him, Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Salatu kulli shayi. That is, Subhanallah, glorify be Allah, wa bihamdih, is the prayer of everything. Surah Al-Isra Allah says, تُسَبِّحُ لَهُ السَّمَاوَةُ السَّبَعُ وَالْأَرْضُ وَمَنْ فِيهِمْ وَمَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ أو وَإِمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِحَهُمْ Allah says in the surah, that is the seven heavens, the seven earths, they glorify Him. And everything is in between them, and everything the inhabitants of them. And everything glorifies Allah. You don't understand how they glorify Allah. So even the stone, even the glass, even, even the dogs, even the cats, even all of those, they make tasbih to Allah. You don't understand how. وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded His slaves, His believers, to make tasbih a lot. Surah Al-Ahzab, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ بِكَرًا كَثِيرًا O you who believe, Remember Allah a lot. وَذْكُرُوهُ وَسَبِّحُوا لَهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِلَةً وَسَبِّحُوهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِلَةً And also glorify Him in the morning and in the evening. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ ذِكْرًا كَثِيرًا وَسَبِّحُوهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِلَةً That is in Surah Al-Ahzab, verse 41. So Nuh alayhi salam, he prompted his son, counseled his son, 
to make his tasbih and he had showed him also the excellence of the tasbih. He said, Wa subhanallah bihamdi, that if you say glorify to be to Allah and his praise, then everything will be provided with. Provision will be granted to you. So from the provision reasons, from the rizq, asbab rizq, that is to say subhanallah wa bihamdi. The hadith regarding this issue is a lot in terms of the verses of tasbih and the tahmeed and the tahleel. Prophet of Allah, he said, لَأَنْ أَقُولَ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ If, verily, if I say subhanallah, وَالْحَمْدُ وَلَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ أَكْبَرْ It's more dearer to me than whatever the sin the sun had risen upon. أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا طَلَعَتْ عَلَيْهِ الشَّمْسِ Prophet of Allah, he said, on the night when I made the ascension, that is up to the heavens. I have met Ibrahim alayhi salam. He said to me, O oh Muhammad, give salam to your ummah from me and tell them that the Jannah has good land and it's got good water and it has land which is cake land and for very the plantation of it is subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. So every time I'm saying this, I'm having plants. Uh, palm tree, palm tree, palm tree into my garden. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah. Free. No, you don't have to pay anything. Subhanallah. Go by this, I'll finish. As I said to you, it's going to take me more than one lecture because I've got still half of the hadith to be explained. I'll leave that inshallah in two weeks' time. And we'll leave you for the questions and answers. You've got five minutes to ten minutes. Please make sure that you ask me regarding the topic. Otherwise, if you don't have any, we'll give you anything, inshallah, you will. Now. Subhanallah. One hour passed like this. So quick. I didn't know it was one hour. Tell them. So it's not to do with the class. Go ahead. Because you make the tea, you have the right of the veto. <laughs> Do I continue with him to supplicate like after that? Because this is my first tashawud, but Imam's second tashawud. Do I continue with the supplication with the Allahumma salli ala Muhammad and do I do that? Or do I so I am a person who had missed some raka'at. I joined in in the second tashawud of the Imam. It's my first tashawud. Do I complete my tashawud or do I just uh, uh, stop at uh, the tahiyyat and that's it? First of all, this question is based upon an assumption. And that assumption is that the middle tashahud is shorter than the last tashahud. And that assumption is wrong. For very, the middle tashahud is like the second tashahud. And this is not going to be finding it in the school of fiqh. They're gonna, any person going to ask you, they're going to no, 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 this middle tashahud is shorter than the second tashahud. Where there is no proof for that. The proof is unauthentic. Where Prophet of Allah in the middle tashahud is like sitting on a burning coal. He is not authentic. For very, the Prophet of Allah, he asked us to pass salutation upon him even in the middle tashahud. So in the middle of tashahud, you say, Tahiyatu lillah, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, and the dua as well. Allahumma gfir li, or Allahumma inni awadu bikum na'adab al-qabr, na'adab al-jahannam. All of that is said exactly at what you say at the last tashahud. Now, okay? I'll answer the questions. Now. Shaykh, what is the proof that um, it's not permissible to wipe over the socks after invalidating your wudu? Unless you um, put your socks on after the original wudu, meaning you washed them. So if you're going to say, what is the proof if I put a sock on top of a sock which has been wiped? What is the proof I can't really wipe on top of it? Is that the last question? Uh, so if I wipe yeah. on a sock and I put another sock yeah. on top of it, what's the proof that I'm putting it on a wiped sock? I'm in wudu. Why can't you just put on that? Well, the proof of that is number one, that the Prophet wasallam, he said, I put them pure. So it's the original wudu. It's number one. Number two, if you're going to do this, then there is no point of having 24 hours for the resident and 72 hours for the, for the traveler because you're going to keep putting a new sock every time. 24 hours, going to give a new sock. Do you understand me? So what is the 24 hours? 24 hours is to start from the beginning, from the original wudu. Do you understand me? It's not the 24 hours from the renewal of the wudu. Because you keep putting socks on the new one, then we'll say to you, khalas, we'll start the new wudu now. The last wudu is the new wudu, so you sock now another 24 hours. And they will be forever, mashallah. No wudu forever. So, 
in contrast to what you have read from Sheikh Ibn Uthameen, there is no proof of it. Sheikh, mm. I, I, I didn't read that, but I was just, I wanted to know because that... Uh, as I said that, yeah. I'm, I'm saying, regardless of what you have read, yeah. that's the proof. Otherwise, I said there's endless. Because, um, Sheikh, you know, you know that hadith in the ad khaltum ad khaltum so if the person um, uh, took it off and put it back on, but isn't it still standing what the Prophet Sallallahu said? That he's put it on, on to, uh, he's, he's still um, able to pray and everything. Or no? Akhi barakallahu fiqh. Ad khaltum ma tahiratayn, that means on the original wudu. So if a person made wudu, and he's still in wudu, and took his sock off and put it on, it's the same. It is the same. It's still the original wudu. But if he broke his wudu, and then after he broke his wudu, took it off and put it on, he's not putting it on the original wudu. He's not putting it on the tahiratayn. Do you understand me? So the original wudu is the first wudu. And let's just have another question as well, because this, this question, uh, if you're not convinced with it, you're going to end up with... Uh, not arriving to the right conclusion regarding the days and the hours. So when the Prophet of Allah, he said, أَدْخَلْتُهُمَا طَاهِرَتَيْنِ I put them, which, which wudu he's talking about? The first wudu. I put them on tahar. That's number one. And when you have made, if you broke your wudu, and then you have renewed the wudu and made masah on the socks, if you took off the sock, it does not invalidate your wudu. But if you put them on, it is not onto the original wudu. Because if you said, no, because you're still in wudu, I can put them again and make wipe, then there is no, no need for timing them. The timing will uh, lose. Khalas, 24 hours, you can't do it. Because I, I will challenge you now. Khalas, I put them in the wudu, a new one. So every time I'm going to put a new one. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I could make wudu, wipe, and take off my sock, and put it again, salam wudu, and start in 20, 24, 24 hours. So your reasoning for 24 hours to say from the original wudu is my reasoning to say to you that you cannot do that. You can't have hold both arguments. So where does the 24 hours start? From where? First time you went. So khalas. That's the original wudu. So if you're going to say, no, but I have put him on, on tahara after I wiped on the sock. That means I could start from, from that. Because you said, a tahara, the same hadith of the Prophet. So start another 24 hours. There will be no timing, 24 hours. That's the argument, if you understand. Okay, I understand. Now, Jazakallah. 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 Um, I've still got a, um, the hadith that you said about the reward of um, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. Yes. Um, and you have to physically stay in the same position, or you can change position to be more For somebody who want to finish Salah, they just change their position. Uh, they're still sitting in the same station, but you have to be physically this hadith of saying La ilaha illallah ten times after Maghrib and Isha, it's bluntly and explicitly says in the hadith, before qabla an yuthmiya rijla, before he bends his foot. So he cannot move. You have to say in the salutation and say it ten times. And not to utter a word, even say salam. Somebody salam alaikum, you say to him like this. Wait with your hand. Finish your ten times. Wa alaikum salam Just with the same thing. And by the way, this is the Hadith of Abdul Rahman and Nuhun, which are Prophet, uh, one of Shaykh al-Bani makes it authentic. Other people, other scholars make it unauthentic. Now, what about saying the Astaghfirullah three times after the Salah? Astaghfirullah doesn't matter if you move your place. Okay. But you say it. You say Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Allah met the salam, the salam, the barak, the yad, the janab, the ikram. La ilaha illallah, the awla sharika lah, the awla mukul, the awla alhamdi. Now. Sheikh, uh, some, uh, I was listening to some uh, tape from Sheikh Salah al-Fawzan, and he was discussing the matter of... Um, uh, taqlid for the Ami uh, and that it is wajib upon him to do taqlid um, uh, if, he's, if he's from the lay people. He just wanted to clarify the matter. Is this, would this be taqlid or would this be, would be tiba'ah? Because I saw some scholars, they differed from calling this taqlid if, uh, if a normal person does this, follows someone. Well, if, if you're going to ask uh, regarding a statement of the Sheikh that he had said, you have to refer to the Sheikh's explanation. But if you're going to ask me what I believe in the word taqlid, yes. that's something else. Yes. I can't explain what the Shaykh Salih Hazan meant because I haven't heard it. First of all, the person, you need to know about the taqlid, he using it as, you know, as like a necessity. What's a necessity? If a person, for example, hungry, there's no food, he eats what? Pork. pork. He's going to die. So use it as a necessity. 
That's the difference between us and those people who are blind followers. So blind following is a necessity. You know, I can't arrive to the haq. I have to have a person. So I'm <coughs> shackled. My Hanafi. Or my sheikh of this masjid. That's taqlid. Which we call it a necessity. And in that necessity, I have to have something else which is no ta'asub. No ta'asub. So you call that blind following, following no problem. Is it tiba? Because I have to, I have to, I have to follow somebody. I'm a layman. I'm, I'm, I'm a person I can't make ishtihad. I have got no tools of ishtihad. I'm not even a student of knowledge. I'm not a scholar or a student of knowledge. So the people of three categories: called scholar, student of knowledge, or a layman. A layman has to have. So when he actually uh, uh, blind follow, he's followed because he's got no other option open for him. But he has to have no ta'asub. Ta'asub it means that. For example, he's got two opinions, one from the sheikh that he always takes from, and another one from another sheikh, and he, with his heart, has you know, tendency to you know, believe that that sheikh maybe is you know, much better, correct, but because of his whims and desire and his fanatism, no, 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 sheikh cannot make a mistake, Hanafi, Hanafi, that's the one we don't say is wrong, it's wrong. So we don't blame the Hanafi to be Hanafi. But we say to them, don't be mutaassib. Because they say, Abu Hanif does not make mistakes. Abu Hanif is like, uh, you know. That's what they say. Abu Hanif does not make mistakes. Who said that? Abu Hanif doesn't say that. So you're actually insulting Abu Hanifa when you say that. So those Hanafi people, we say to them, no problem. You're Hanafi and Shafi'i, no problem. As long as you don't make mutaassib. But if you reach the level to distinguish between the Hakk and the Ba'at, so the knowledge, you can't just say, I'm going to be sticking to Shafi'i, I'm going to stick to Hanafi. That's called madhabiyun. Madhab followers. Now, tafadl. Tafadl? One more question legally. Like Doesn't matter one more question. You say uh, a question. Uh, can we, even can we not say uh, Ayat al-Kursi or any other in between? Or straight away you have to say La ilaha illallah? After this, la, because the, the Allah meant the salam, but Allah is always to start with it. Start with Allah. Start with it. Always starts with it. And then you say the dua. Don't make the dua of al-Kursi. Leave it afterwards. Otherwise, you're going to be staying stuck onto your position for a long time. <laughs> you know, release yourself and start saying salam to everybody. <laughs> Say it ten times. <laughs> and get, get a habit of that. Get a habit. Make it as a habit. For me, it's become a habit. Khalas. Kicks in. Every Maghrib after Isha. Now. Um, Sheikh, you question around the interpretation of some ayah of the Quran. Um, how, as, uh, as we as Ahl Sunnah, how do we, how do we um, take our interpretation? Because I'm aware Imam Ahmed said that the tafsir. It doesn't have any uh, yeah, words, chains of narrations. And I've, I've, I've seen that some, uh, for example, if I give the ayah about the alcohol, um, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it has some benefits, um, but the. Few manafia kathir. But the. With more maqbar and nafia. And then the, the interpret, interpretation of this would be that uh, the money and he's, the selling he's selling of it. But then if we later on came to understand that, for example, scientists, they say that red wine has some. Benefits. Is this a valid interpretation of the ayah, or can we not say, uh, if they say like in small <coughs> quantities it helps, is it impermissible for us to say this, or do we stick to what we, we have? Okay. First of all, uh, the uh, interpretation uh, of the ayah, the best interpreter is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's number one. And from the companions, the interpretation of Abdullah ibn Abbas comes after that. And then after that, the interpretation of the students of Abdullah ibn Abbas. If we have a solid proof to say that this is what the Prophet of Allah understood from this ayah, then we cannot have an option except to accept that interpretation. But if we don't have any, we have a number of narrations from the companions. And those narrations are either weak or they are strong, but they are opposing one another. Then if we have two interpretations for a verse, and both can be correct, we don't have any problem to make those two interpretations for one verse. The verse that you have brought is a good example. If we interpreted this verse of the alcohol, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says that Allah Azza wa had put harm and benefit in the alcohol, but the harm or the dis disadvantage or the sins in the alcohol is more than the benefit, if we interpret that into the selling of the alcohol, that means you're going to get money. That's why the, the benefit is it. Uh, or you're going to interpret that, that the alcohol has some sort of uh, effect, even if you swallow them or you eat it, 
you're going to be having benefit. We have no problem to have that. But the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Tadawu ibadatullah, the wala tadawu bi haram. Seek medicine, O slaves of Allah, if you are ill, but don't seek medicine into haram. That means there is a medicine haram. Did you the hadith? That means there is a medicine haram. So I remember those people who had used to kidney, uh, for example, not problem kidney. Um, they have like uh, uh, stones, stones, kidney stones." They used to tell them, beer, beer is the good thing. So beer can remove the kidney stones. But we do have beer, which is an alcoholic beer. But this beer is alcoholic. So it's got benefit to remove all the kidney stones. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says that every disease, Allah made what? A cure. Except for the what? The death. But in the hadith which says as well, and He did not put the cure of that disease in what he had prohibited. Look at that. He did not place the cure of the disease in what he had what? Fi prohibited. So, if there is a cure in the alcohol from that kidney stone, there's an alternative, it's a halal way. So Allah put the cure in something halal. This haram, it might cure you from the kidney stone, they're going to give you disease of either make you drunkard, which is a normal, you know, obvious disease, or make you addicted to it, or it could be make something else to fail, you know, whatever it is. So we have no problem to understand that the ayah has got two things. The, uh, the, the obvious, which is the money, and the non-obvious, which is, if it carries the two, we have. As Imam Ahmad, he says, that th three things that have no uh, narrations, that's in general. And he says about the battles, al-maghazi, and the biography, the seerah, and the interpretation of the Qur'an, those they don't have the chain to trace them, that's in general. But where is, there is biography which is authentic, and there is tafsir which is authentic, and there is as well battles which are authentic. But in general, most of them are narrations with, without chains, and that is why uh, you have the biography of the Prophet of Allah, lots, so, so many of it, it's not authentic. Okay. But if it goes along the principles, we don't mind to narrate them, inshallah. Bias, can I call it a night, inshallah? سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا تستغفر لك